Next up, the all new noise reduction filter. To demonstrate this, I've loaded up a classic example of noisy footage, namely a video from a cell phone that was recorded during a concert in a low light situation. Anyone who already has a third party noise reduction filter will know how many of them can be pretty complicated to set up. But even worse than that, most of them will be painfully slow to render. I for one don't know of many noise reduction filters that in fact don't need up to seconds worth to render just one frame after being applied. Something that obviously not only slows down your workflow considerably, but also makes for exponentially longer render times upon export. Well, Apple would appear to have alleviated both these issues associated with noise reduction while still delivering impressive results. I'll just apply it to my clip here so we can take a look at it. And seeing that it is a filter or rather effect, it can of course be found in my effects browser. After dragging it from here, from under the basics category onto my clip, we can look in the inspector under effects to take a look at the available parameters. And I think it's pretty apparent at first sight setting this up couldn't be any easier. And as we'll also see in the moment, the speed at which it's rendered is also pretty amazing. How the quality of the results compare pixel for pixel to other commercial noise reduction filters, for example, I can't actually say beyond just a few unscientific comparisons to, which we'll get to in a second. But if there's a specific noise reduction filter you'd like to see this compared to, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So as we can see in the inspector, we have a whopping two parameters for setting up our noise reduction. First, a pop-up menu for the amount of noise reduction, ranging from low to maximum, followed by a pop-up menu for setting the level of sharpening, ranging from none to maximum. By default, these are set to medium and low, which from my initial experience is actually great for most material. Obviously, any given clip may need more or less of one or the other. So if I move further down the clip to an area where we see this blue sky with some balloons, where I'd say the amount of noise is most easily visible, and I just switch the noise reduction on and off with its check mark, I think the improvement is pretty obvious. But what's even more impressive is the speed at which it's rendered. Because no matter whether I change the amount of noise reduction via the pop-up menu, or just move to another part of the clip, all I ever see is a very short processing noise reduction message at the bottom of the viewer, barely long enough to even read it, and already the noise reduction has been applied. If parked on one frame, I could even try out all the different levels of reduction, and it's only ever rendered once. Meaning if I return to a previous setting, it's shown to me in real time without even seeing the brief message in the viewer. So basically I can check out any and all levels of noise reduction within seconds without wasting minutes of my life just to get the best possible results. Of course, generally using the higher settings will progressively soften the image altogether, in turn requiring higher sharpness levels. Whereby overdoing either or even both will obviously increasingly result in an unnatural looking image. So again, being able to experiment with any given combination practically in real time is an amazing time saver. Especially when you'll want to experiment with different settings at different positions in the clip to find the best average overall settings. But as if that weren't amazing enough, the real kicker is that if the clip has not yet been rendered with the noise reduction applied, then the filter actually deactivates itself when the clip is played. That way, you always have the best possible performance upon playback without having to render the clip in advance. Something that was generally unthinkable when applying noise reduction in the past, next to simply leaving the noise reduction deactivated until the very end. In fact, my workflow of choice up until now. For my aforementioned unscientific comparison, I've simply duplicated the clip on top of itself and applied the noise reduction from Final Cut Pro to one of them, and neat videos noise reduction filter version 4.8 to the other, and cropped the top one down the middle. This way we see half of each clip on either side. Whereby I should probably mention I only used the more or less automatic settings from the neat filter and didn't fiddle with it for ages. From experience, something I will normally actually have to do with Neat, and is one of those little rabbit holes that one can easily fall into. But even then, applying it requires much more time and clicking before getting back to my project. Of course, all of that aside from the fact that I also have to jump out of Final Cut Pro into an extra window to apply it out of context and have to do the same should any adjustments be necessary. So just in terms of workflow, Final Cut's own noise reduction is a huge boon to the whole process. The final cut noise reduction is set to high for the amount and low for the sharpness. 
Now if I activate the crop and adjust it left and right to show more or less of each image, assuming that any of this actually survives YouTube's compression algorithm enough for you to even be able to tell, then you'll see that the differences are nearly indistinguishable. In this particular case at least, I would maybe even go so far and say that Final Cut's noise reduction is a little bit better overall. For me personally, the result is more than acceptable and certainly worth saving the extra money for a third party filter in this case. In the case of Neat, that works out to a $75 to $250 saving depending on your host app. What the difference in performance is, is also easily shown by simply hitting the spacebar and playing it back. As we can see, as opposed to the Final Cut noise reduction applied to the clip itself, playback is now considerably more choppy. Basically, if you ask me, unusable if not rendered, and the performance one would actually expect with any other noise reduction filter applied to your footage. But again, just a quick unscientific test, so give it a shot with your own footage and let me know what you think in the comments below. Maybe you have Neat or any other third-party filter and can compare it. And if you do, let us know what your impressions and results are in the comments as well. Uh -huh.